I imagine both of you are just singing constantly in your life all the time. I sing sometimes, but no, oddly, I'm not like one of those people. I know people that like sing. never stop singing and I don't want to hang around them actually. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Wow, I love your room. Is that Thank your you. room? It is. It's my it's my bedroom on this very fancy set. No, it looks like a design magazine. Gorgeous. I love it. Thank you so much. Wow, oh. this is a great start. You're my favorite interview yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to talk about your show, season two of Girls 5 Eva. Girls 5 Eva are hoping to become two hit wonders. We are officially in album mode. Yeah, we do it live. Finally, we're in charge of the set. No more singing whatever crap they give us. Half our old songs weren't even spell checked. We don't want no average jokes, so you better be rolling in some dud. So season two picks up with the girls in album mode. How would you describe album mode, both of you? Album mode means we are we are not doing regular life. We are actually, um, you know, recognizing that our um, our our without our focus on this thing, it might not happen. Yeah, it's like an operating system. It's like this is our this is our the way we're going to function as a group has to be with the album being our number one priority. And you see what kind of tension and conflict that kicks up. You know, so it's it's a it's a juggling act. It's so fun to watch. And season two has quite a good like celebrity guest list. And I don't know if you can talk about, but like Hoda Kotb is like my favorite human I've like ever seen on TV. She just um, seems like such a like ray of sunshine. She is. She's, she's oh, good. so, she's joy. She she's is, right. her name should be joy. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me so happy to hear because my question was going to be like, please tell me she is the wonderful soul that I believe she is in my heart. So that makes me very happy that she, she is. is really she just that her. great. <laughs> and she would love she you would love most you. importantly. Aww, yeah. Yay. She would love you. you are both so insanely talented in like so many ways. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to tell me one thing that you're not great at. Oh no, gosh, no, so no. many. Complete basket case mess most, most of the time. time. I'm terrible at organizing I'm terrible at organizing. I'm a, I'm a mess. I can't re re respond to text messages or emails or I forget if it's not written down. Yeah. It's just like in one ear and out the other. I would, don't put me in charge of anything. I will, I will fail. <laughs> she, but I'll write a song knows, about it and, and it'll be a hit. Gonna be a hit. <laughs> wrote all of the songs on the album so if everybody hates it it means that they hate you as a person on every level jesus summer what probably what i'm noticing at the moment i could pick many things i just think this is the one that's at top of mind is um it's just my kind of indecisiveness mm -hmm. my like my uh, my fear sometimes or the or the the the, the paralyzed Zation, I feel sometimes when I'm afraid I'm going to make the wrong choice. So I make no choice, which mm -hmm. is just always wrong. But singing, you're good at singing. Sometimes. So oh, good sometimes. at singing both Sometimes. Of you. Acting, sometimes. Every time. Could've, we could have talked about weaknesses in those areas too, but why? Why? No, why? Trying to advertise <laughs> We're the trying show. Trying to advertise the show. <laughs> there are no weaknesses in those areas. None. <laughs> this is just something that, you know, we wake up doing. Yeah, that's right. What you got here, Rick? My riff Rolodex. All the greats are in here. I imagine both of you are just like singing, doing laundry and doing the dishes, making up songs about that. Are you just singing constantly in your life all the time? I am not. Are you? No. I, I, I do make up songs a lot because I have kids around the house. So I kind of do. I'm also like kind of always like motivating or, them or whatever to do that. And I don't do it enough in my personal life. So I think that's why it bleeds its way in. Um, strangely, and I don't think you're like this. I don't listen to music as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it stresses me out a little bit. Why? Just because I'm sometimes I'm thinking of it just it's just like a thing I also want to be doing more. Oh, mm -hmm. So sometimes it put it yeah. doesn't put me in the relaxed mode. It puts me in a <gasps> compare and despair. Oh my god, that was so good. That's so brilliant. I love you know. So it doesn't necessarily sometimes calm me down in the ways that it used to. How about you? Yeah. I I tend to be more of like I have a, you know, internal dialogue or monologue that's just that I'll verbal. I do a lot of talking to myself when I'm at home. Like I love I love a podcast. 
Um, but yeah, and I have a dog, so I do a lot of talking to the dog. Louie, be cute. Bite your paws and be cute. Look like a bat. Good boy. I sing sometimes, but no, oddly, I'm not like one of those people. I know people that like Sing. never stop singing and I don't want to hang around them actually. <laughs> <laughs> I will say my dad is a whistler. He whistles everything and like it does. Oh, yeah. It gets old. After a certain amount of time, yeah, there's a shh is what I want to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you brought up your dog, Louie, right? Louie. Yes. yes. So cute. So how did Louie come into your life? Oh, Louie has been kind of a longstanding dream of my partner, Joe Tippett and I. We really wanted to get a dog together and we found Louie and he just is, he's a cavapoo and he's a really precious um, little soul who's made our home. It sounds really cheesy, but it makes our little home feel like a family. And it's a really sweet feeling. It's like, I'm 42 years old. I'm living with my partner for the first time in my entire life. Cause I'm, we're one year in, it's going great, but it's like, I'm, you know, I feel like I'm a little, I'm a baby bird about some of this stuff. And it's a really beautiful feeling to share your home and make a, make a home with someone. So Louie has been a big part of that. That's amazing. Um, Final question. This is going to be a fun one and a quick one. Can you each tell me three things you're obsessed with right now? Severance. That was just the first thing that came to my mind because I just finished watching That finale? It. Wow. I mean, um, Mama's 2 Pizza in New York. Um, it's really good. And my dog, Louie. I'm obsessed with my dog, Louie. I like, I'm thinking about, I can't wait to touch his furry little body. Hmm. Adorable. He's really cute. So um, well, to start with the television show, I, I'm really obsessed with The Gilded Age right now because I have mm -hmm. so many New York friends that are in it. And uh, and I just feel like it's so amazing. Um, gosh, what kind of food? I'm obsessed with um, food services, like DoorDash. Uh, yes. Eats. Things that will bring places. <laughs> like, I'm obsessed yeah. with like the fact that I can go, <laughs> and I can literally, I'm because I'm touring now, I can literally be anywhere in a hotel or anywhere. And within a couple of clicks, somebody is bringing <laughs> something to eat to me. Amazing. Um, and I'm obsessed always with my husband. Mm. No, always obsessed. I mean, like if I'm ever anywhere doing anything professionally, it's because this man is at home taking care of everything else. So sweet. Oh, you two are just the best. Thank you so much. It's been great talking to you. Thanks. I love the picture of your dog. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Busy, Paula, I am so excited to talk to you both about Girls 5 Eva. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So season two picks up with the girls in album mode, which honestly yes. seems incredibly exhausting to be in album mode. You yes. guys are like hustling your butts off. I'm wondering how you in your real life, like relax, how do you unwind? Like what is your go-to relaxation? Mine is my animals, my dogs, and watching my soaps, watching RuPaul's Drag Race, taping things on HGTV. I, I never watch comedy. It's hilarious. It's like, I write comedy, I perform in comedy, and I just I, I just don't really ever want to watch comedy that much. <laughs> and um, maybe because it keeps me in work mode, it makes me feel like the comedy writer part of me that I have to like worry about about what's happening. I really love like listening to music mm -hmm. and kind of like just hanging out like with my kids. I totally get that. So Paula, in the show, your character Gloria is a dentist. In your actual real lives, how do you feel about the dentist? One of my relatives is a, is a pediatric dentist and he's wonderful, And but I've never been able to go to him because he's a pediatric dentist. Mm -hmm. But I deeply fear the dentist. Me I've too, had some traumatizing sense. experiences at the dentist and it, the two of us share gagging. We're terrible gaggers. And so I've had times where I've had to get work done in my mouth and I was gagging. It's so oh. anxiety filled because they're getting frustrated with you. And and so I, I tend to, I have an appointment coming up because I made all my post pandemic appointments and I I have to I have go to back. back. It's yeah. been a while and I'm, I really am dreading oh, it. I have but to I be really honest. Don't go. I really yeah. don't want to go. Yeah. It's like the smell, the smell I, of the dentist, like that drill smell. Ooh. <laughs> no. Yeah. It really freaks me. I don't know why the dentist is just not, it's not pleasant guys. They need no. to make it better. Yeah. For they me. do. Now they have, some places have massage chairs. Like if you can go to a dentist with a massage Ooh, chair. that's good. 
Maybe you get a I like that. Well, I could there. watch Girls 5 Eva while <laughs> getting my teeth drilled. There you go. I, I figured out one good thing to help me is I hold I hold the spit sucker. Oh. If you hold your own spit sucker and you can do that when you want to do it, there's something very uh, out of control yes. feeling about the dentist. And especially if you're gaggy or whatever. That's a mm. great point. This is it a is. great, this should be a Not whole good. show in itself of Not us talking good. about our gag reflexes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then let's pivot. Let's talk fashion. So in episode three, Gloria makes like an, a random comment about Crocs. Like there's a Croc joke. What is your Croc stance, both of you? I love the kind of, I say Crocs, but I also have some dance goes that are l- kind of like Crocs. They don't have the holes, but they're that same material. Yeah. And I love having those kind of cloggy, rubbery, washable things at the back door because I live out in the country and I love being able to just get in those and just go out. And if I step in, you know, a dog pile, I can just hose it off. Paul and I have this in common. We really just love a sensible shoe. Also fashion, busy. How many necklaces would you say you wear like in an average day? And how do they not get so tangled? Like, what is your secret? I always wonder that too. Everybody, it's the question. It's the million dollar question. If I could bobble it and sell it, I would make exactly fifteen dollars. Um, I don't know. I today it's interesting. I'm only wearing two. You had a lot I, yesterday. I felt like I was wearing too many necklaces yesterday. But um, I don't know why they don't get tangled, except that one trick that I think I maybe have discovered is that if you get chains that have different thickness, Mm -hmm. they don't really get as tangled. And also don't do them when you're doing physical activity, Mm -hmm. like jogging, running, whatever, or sleeping. If you want to have a necklace party, Mm -hmm. you have got to be committed to taking them off every Mm -hmm. single night before you go to bed, all of them. I could never sleep in jewelry. People sleep in earrings all the time, I hear. Mm -hmm. Like, could never, anyway. People sleep in necklaces and they wake up and they're horribly tangled. I'm like, yeah, that makes yeah. total sense. So why why no. would you sleep in a necklace? Yeah. Crazy. So, Busy, I was listening to your latest podcast and you talked about something that blew your mind and also my mind called the sofa doctor slash couch doctor. And Paul, if you're not familiar, basically Busy couldn't get her couches in. They saw the I've heard there's somebody you can call that, that cuts down your couch. No, 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 no. Guys, it's much more intense than that. They, with surgical precision, these two men barely looked me in the eye, barely spoke. They're like, what are we dealing with? And like restoration hardware, they flipped it over, removed its sofa skin perfectly, sawed the thing apart, took it downstairs, welding gear, put the steel frame back together, put it back together. You can't tell that it was ever touched. That's amazing. It was amazing. Amazing. I love finding shit like that. I just love it. I yeah. love when you can find somebody that can fix something that's obscure. I love totally. it when somebody is like, I have a skill yeah. and it's going to be put to use in this very specific mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Like I was, we were trying to, on the podcast, we were trying to figure out and Casey was like, maybe the guys who started it had a background in like upholstery mm-hmm. or something because the way that they take it apart so perfectly and put it back oh, together. Oh, it's definitely upholstery. They're like yeah. furniture makers. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. wild. That's great. Well, thank you so much, both of you. The show thank is you. amazing, as everyone thought it would be. It's going to be so fun for everyone else to see. And this was great. So thank you so much. It's yeah, great talking you. to you. It was yeah. so you fun. Too. Have a great day. Uh, and we're here with a surprise first look at us in the studio. The eyeball icon thing is saying zero. It's just us in here. It's just us in here. Oh. Cease and desist, bitches. Girls 5 Eva are hoping to become two hit wonders. We are officially in album mode. Yeah, we do it live. Finally, we're in charge of the set. No more singing whatever crap they give us. Half our old songs weren't even spell checked. We don't want no average jokes, so you better be rolling in some dud. We're back in biz. Can we do it live? We need the album done in six weeks. That, that's fast. I know people over 30 tend to have other things in their lives. I have a kid. <gasps> but she never talks to me, so I'm via veil. Okay. Girls 5 Eva. You're a producer? 
We got another toxic dude on our hands. Cool, cool. I don't think I saw him sniff our chair. He didn't. Did he take his dick out? Not that I would notice. They are so boring to me. We got, we got, we got. Momentum, yeah, um, it's our moment. We just have to make the most undeniable album of all time. What you got there, Mick? My riff Rolodex. All the greats are in here.